Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Could you please state your name and your prison ID number for the record? My name is Michael McDonald. My uh, and my ID number is 1229059. Thank you. I'm here in Representative Knoll. To my left is Commissioner Weisenthal. Hello there. And we are seeing you today on case number for a discretionary parole hearing on case number C18333684 1, count five and count two, interception of communication. <clears throat> You were sentenced to two 14 to 36 month sentences running concurrent. You have a parole eligibility date of April 14, 2022, and a projected expiration date of January 30, 2023. Does that sound correct to you? Sounds about right, yes. And caseworker Carrillo, could you verify that sentence structure and confirm any holes for detainers? It appears correct, and I don't see any holes in detainers. Thank you very much. I'm going to show you a document on the screen. This is an a notification of this hearing and advisement of your rights. Could you verify that is your signature on the document? Yes, it is. Okay. So you have been properly noticed for this hearing, so we can continue. Do you have an opening statement that you would like to make? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say an opening statement. Okay. So, yeah, first of all, I want to say that I'm sorry to, to burden you guys with the, taking this time. I appreciate you for seeing me today. Uh, I've made a lot of mistakes. I take full responsibility for what I've done. Uh, I went through a really bad divorce. I, a divorce that I was really emotional and I reacted in, in a lot of different ways that I shouldn't have. And I've done over three years being incarcerated. I've seen things that I've uh, I can never unsee, and I've done I've, I've impacted so many people. My kids, for example, haven't seen me for over five years now, zero contact. My ex, she hasn't been able to get child support from me because I've been incarcerated for all this time. I've impacted her by recording those calls, and without saying these calls are, are being recorded. Uh, I'm sorry for what I've done, and I. I I, I never replaced this time. I'm, I'm ready to get back to my life and, and just be, be done with this and put this behind me. So thank you. Okay. Um, I do want to let you know we do have um, support letters here for you from your mother. Uh, we have a, a letter from the Crossroads Prison Ministries acknowledging the studies you've done with their organization. We also have a letter from your father. And we have the letter, the information, but the certificates that you sent to the office yourself. So we have all of that. That will be in the file and for review of any other commissioners that review this file so they are aware of the family support that you have. Um, what is your plan if you are granted parole? If I'm granted parole, my plan is to go, go uh, help my mom with her ranch up in Washington. She's got a 20 acre ranch and uh, could really use my help up there. I actually grew up on an 80 acre farm in Missouri with, with my mom and we had every kind of animal growing up and learned the value of hard work. So I want to go up there and help her out, uh, get, find employment up there, be able to, to spend time with family and, and uh, get, get my life straightened back, back up to where I was before. Um, I also want to, to say that I, I did do a lot of programs and had a lot of time to think since I've been in, incarcerated. Um, I've done I've done all the classes I could take, which were, was the HVAC, I finished that, I finished the financial literacy. I also went on NDF and became a wildland firefighter and went on some firefighting, which was a, a unique experience. I actually got my feet burnt and was fighting the fires and stuff and all the bugs attacking me, but I learned a lot up there. And um, I also learned a lot while coming to Casa Grande. I attended uh, Getting It Right class, which I learned a lot um, through that one. And uh, Hope's transformational leadership class, I, I learned about how my reactions to I, either being proactive or reactive to different responses and, and being emotional. So being able to think clearly before I make any decisions or, or do anything. So I learned a lot. I, I volunteered a lot of the Hope projects with, with 100 Christmases and doing all the furniture. I've also helped with uh, 
uh, building bicycles for kids at the Pearson Center, and I'm also gainfully employed right now at an Italian restaurant on the Strip. And I've, I've done a, I've done a lot. I'm ready to get back to life. So. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to go over your risk assessment. This is an objective tool we use to determine a level of risk as far as granting parole. We need to make sure that the, all the elements are correct in this document. So after I go through it, if there's something that you disagree with, you can take a look at it and see if changes need to be made. So we have you down as 22 is your age at first arrest. You have no prior parole or probation revocations. You were employed eight of the 12 months full-time employment prior to the instant offense. You do have property crimes in your history and then instant offense your other case that you've already discharged there was property crimes in there um, per your psi you had some use of alcohol you haven't had arrests or convictions not not, um, not severe disruption of functioning you have no prior felony convictions currently 38 years old you are not validated as a gang member you have completed financial literacy, the HVAC program, and the, the programs that you just mentioned. You were given credit for that. You've, uh, you've had no disciplinaries while you've been incarcerated, and you're currently uh, community trustee level custody at, there at Casa Grande. So your total score is a four. You, uh, it scores out as a low risk. The guideline recommendations to parole you at your initial parole eligibility. The aggravating factors, those that go against you getting parole, are you do have um, a prior misdemeanor domestic battery conviction. Your criminal record has become increasingly more serious. You've jumped from no felonies to several. Um, and you do have repetitive, similar criminal conduct. You do have three misdemeanor convictions for violating a restraining order. The mitigating factors, those that go in your favor, you do have community or family support. We have all the letters I just mentioned. You have participated in programs, and you have remained disciplinary free while you've been incarcerated. <coughs> Does that sound correct to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Commissioner Weisenthal, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Um, Why did you commit this crime? I committed this, I recorded a phone conversation while going through a divorce. Um, my attorney told me to record everything. I, I made a mistake and recorded it and I did not say this call has been recorded. And it, it just, um, divorces are, are very emotional and, and, and messy and I, I wish I, I, I would have followed every rule and regulation and I, I didn't know what to do, you know. I, I really, not being able to see my kids for so long really drove me to, to just file documents and do different things trying to see them and i'm i'm also a child of divorce when i, when I was five my, my parents got divorced and it was really uh tolling on me and i know how my kids would feel so i just you know i i take full responsibility for it and, and there's there's nobody to blame but myself um i can tell you that i i have been completely disciplinary free I, I, it's been really hard to to make sure that, that i follow every rule and regulation here in prison and it's so easy to get a write up in here for being uh, moving your, your clothes not in the right position or not not being doing certain little things so i want you just to, to be able to see that i can conform to rules and regulations and that that uh, as a testimony to, to what i've done in prison making sure that i, I have stayed uh, disciplinary free and right up free and i can do that successfully on parole as well and, and we understand that actually uh miss noel and i we both have 25 years in the prison system so we, we know you're supposed to not get disciplinaries, but we do know how hard it is not to get those disciplinaries. Um, but on your on your incident offense, um, and it's a lot more than recording a phone call. You know, um, uh, forgery, burglary. You know, a whole bunch of everything is just wrapped up in one. And, and to see you pretty much, you had no criminal record. You, know, you had the 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 uh, restraining orders and the domestic battery. Uh, I don't know if it was the same victim in everything, if it was your, your ex-wife, but um, and no, no uh, uh, drugs, no alcohol. So f to go from absolutely nothing to all these felonies. So you're gonna be on- Sir, I, I, oh, go I, ahead. I, I, go. Um, yeah, I did wanna say something to, I, I 
I made a lot of mistakes. I, I really wish I would have had better counsel. And he said to not take the deal was a, a wobbler. They're going to drop all 16 felonies to a misdemeanor and do one to three on probation. And, and I, I took it to trial and, and I was misinformed and I got convicted. I, I've done all this time and seen all kinds of crazy things and, and just, uh, I, I, I know the value of liberty now and how much freedom means to me and not being able to, to, to the impact my family and my kids and everything that, that, that I've lost coming here. I used to work for the city of Las Vegas. I had no criminal record before. I was a good member of society. I, I helped with nonprofits out in Las Vegas. I worked for Easter Seals and done a lot of different community service projects and things. I was even working at the uh, courtyard over at the, the um, with the city of Las Vegas for the, the homeless situation over there. And just to, to go through all this and, and be able to to overcome that and and uh, get back to life, I, I, I can tell you that, that there's there's nothing else that, that means more to me than, than freedom, time, and my family. So, so I I really like you guys to consider that as well. And, and you and you have you haven't had any contact with the victim. No, sir. No, okay. right. no the victim or my children okay. over five years. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, and if you are granted a parole, you won't be able to have contact with the victim. I realize you have children in common, but that'll have to all be orchestrated through parole and probation if you're granted parole. You, you cannot just reach out. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else that you I, I understand. That, oh. oh, I want to say I understand that, and I, I would uh, wait till I'm off of parole, get, get back on my feet, and then uh, go through whatever reunification process that I have to go through, through the courts or where, whatever that may be. So, um, yeah, it's, it's gonna, I would love to see my kids again. And, and I, I, I don't want to go nowhere near my ex. I understand that, that she must have been afraid watching all these Dateline specials and all this other stuff. But I have never threatened my ex-wife or done anything to, to, to harm her or my, kid, my children. But I, and I, I just want to, I, I just wish I, I could express how much, how sorry I am for not being there, not being able to, to support and take care of my children too, for five years that I've been going, you know, going through all this, this uh, divorce and different situations through family court. And I know she, she used to work in, as a paralegal in, in the family court system, and she could see all that, you know, she knew exactly what needs to be done or, or what could file it. I, I, I've never been through any any court situation or been in trouble before, and, and to come to prison for it, I'll, I can't, I couldn't even. You guys couldn't even imagine how 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 terrible. You know, you got gang members and people stabbing each other, and fight. I mean, just you're you're living with murderers and robbers and killers, and yeah, it's a, it's a it's a crazy experience, and I just want to, to put it all behind me and get back to my life. So, okay. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add before we conclude the hearing? Um, I, I would just like to, to uh, reiterate that, that uh, I can follow all, all the rules on parole and probation. I'm ready to, to get back to, to life. Um, I can't wait to see my family again, my mom, my dad. and my, I have a lot of relatives and a lot of people in, in this community as well in, in Las Vegas. Um, my, like I said, my uncle is a famous judge out here. He did the Judge Bonaventure. He did the opinions trial. And, um, my cousin is, is a, a, a judge out here as well. Um, I, I, my grandpa was actually the constable here in Las Vegas, and, and uh, we have a lot of ties to the community here. But I'd like to go to Washington and help my mom out and um, maybe come back and see my family here after parole and save my dad or, or my other family, my brothers and sister and stuff. So thank you. Okay. So what will happen now is we will deliberate on your case. We'll make recommendation to the board. It takes four of the seven commissioners to grant or deny parole. I do need to let you know that the safety of any victims, victims' family, and the general public is always taken into consideration when granting parole and setting parole conditions. You'll be notified in writing with an order from the board in probably two to three weeks through your caseworker. Okay? All right, thank you for seeing me today. Right, good you. luck to you. Good luck to you. That's it Thank for you. Gonna do. That's it. Thank you, uh, Ms. Crail. We will see you next time. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good one. You too. All right.